before the series, everybody was like, oh, it's 16 seed against a one seed, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, nah, I know, I know who we are. Hello, everyone. Welcome into Tech Sags Rewind, presented by our good friends at Specs here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. Had a fun show today, Mr. Savage. You agree? Yeah, I agree. John Harris, we had... Uh... We had Bronny, always fun, even though he's on the phone, on a mobile, like Bronathan. you said. Yep. Yeah, Bronathan. Um, who else do we have? Trisha. How could I forget whoa, about whoa, Trisha whoa, Ford? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got to go Coach Ford there. You can't go first name. Like, Yeah, you got mad at yourself earlier yeah. for going Mike instead of Coach Elko. Like, I don't go see Coach Henry and say, hey, Pat. What up, Pat? Now, P money. Buzz is different. I think you can't call Buzz Buzz because that's how he's identified. Coach Williams. But I think Buzz. I honestly is okay. don't think I've ever heard anyone say Coach Williams. No, it's Buzz. Yeah, it's Coach Buzz. But it's Coach Elko. Yeah. It's Coach Henry. Coach Ford. It's Coach Ford. Schloss. You can go Schloss, but it is last name. You I did go. call. I did say that to him once in the lobby, and hey, I Schloss. immediately turned around. I was like, "What am I doing? That was that was so dumb." Pardon Schloss. Pardon anyway, me, Schloss. Uh, Eric Asaris, what was your favorite part of the show? Come on, man. You know, you know my favorite part of the show. I got to be biased. It's track and field, getting ready for the national championship this this next weekend in uh, in Eugene. So I'm excited. You don't excited. even know her. You were like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sorry. That was Sorry. Me. I apologize. You were great today, Eric. Good job. Thank you. Hey, so we had all that. Trisha Ford was phenomenal. You want to check it out. It's the Rewind now. But you look at this team and you consider what's ahead. The game they open up with, the Notre Dame game. It's interesting how, like, we had Pete Futek on here yesterday who, who sees them as a potential playoff team and, you know, an, an opportunity for a banner win for A&M. That's a team that I've seen some people really down on and some people extremely high on. And I guess that's just being Notre Dame. That's what you get when you're Notre Dame. Notre Dame has issues at, in the offensive line. As many, as many, if if not more than A and M does, they have. They're really they they went heavy into the transfer portal to get tackles and didn't get any. So they're moving guards out to tackles. Guys who have been career backups are being forced into the offensive line. I know they got a good center and a good uh, guard, but you know the, overall they're really concerned about their guards. They're, they're top. I think if I got this right, their top returning receiver uh, played lacrosse. Was a guy that had been there on lacrosse and you know uh, went on to football last year because they were in such need and and actually did pretty well. And then they had the Jaden Greathouse kid from uh, Westlake over in Austin. But their receivers are are good. They're very similar to the situation at A and M. You know they feel like they're good but unproven. Uh, they had a fourteen hundred yard running back that got drafted. Now that said, now. Notre Dame is going to be very good on defense, especially in the defensive line. But if you look at both teams, where their biggest question mark is uh, in the offensive line, and if you look at both teams where their greatest strength is, um, it's at uh, 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 it's in the defensive line. So that'll be interesting. But I also th find this to be something uh, significant. And, and Mike Elko was asked about it, and he spoke on it yesterday. There's a very good chance – that Riley Leonard, the Notre Dame quarterback, could have been the quarterback at Texas A&M because that was, of course, as you know, he was uh, Mike Elko's quarterback at Duke. And Mike said, hey, you know, we did the dive into our roster, and Connor Wigman's the guy. So Mike Elko felt like, hey, I'm going to stick with Connor Wigman rather than try to get Riley Leonard in, and he's going to face Riley Leonard. So um, maybe when all said and done, that game's going to be determined by Hey, what was the better quarterback move that Mike Elko made by you know sticking with Connor, and, or uh, or did he make a mistake by not you know pursuing Riley Leonard? Um, and yeah, just some of these memories of these seniors and even our regular you know just our returning players got to experience this this past you know weekend. Like that's going to be with them forever, and it's going to drive them. And so. I knew we had a shot. Like yeah. I knew we had a really good shot, and I think we, you saw it. And just we couldn't kind of, you know, get over. So let's go back to the Maya home run for a moment because <laughs> I was surprised. I didn't know this. And I think they said it on the broadcast, and Kay certainly told me that that was her first extra base hit, and it just happened to be the biggest hit of her career. <laughs> Hopefully, many more are coming. But. Yeah, that's a good time to pick it, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and she crushed that ball. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I just. And then for me, what I really loved was seeing how excited the team was for her mm -hmm. when she came home. Um, and just there's just so many good things. And I'll probably watch the games here in the next couple of days again and get some more tidbits out of it. But um, there was just so many 
times, you know, um, we have Haley Golden, we call him our special teams base runner. Like she gets the go ahead run on Friday. Just little things that are helping us um, win ball games. And so there's just a lot of teachable moments. How do you digest after a game, right? Like, <laughs> like I, I, I stay away. Like I, I don't want anything to do with sports. Like I become anti sports guy when my teams lose. Like, but this is, you know, you've, you've got to start working the moment after. How do you kind of digest and process what happens? Yeah, I mean, I still haven't really slept, I'll be honest with okay. you. Um, so I'm still kind of, my brain's still going 20 miles an hour, um, or actually 200 miles an hour. Um, but I will. I, I will take a couple of days. We kind of get into end-of-year meetings. I have a bunch of seniors coming. They came to the office yesterday, and it was so cute. They're like, Coach Ford, we just want to be here. And I'm like, I want you here, too, like mm-hmm. just sat in the, in the the chair. So they're going to come hang out with me a little bit today after meetings. And you're just trying to kind of find your way again. Like right. you have to kind of catch your breath. Um, and so I don't know, it's just a little mixture of everything. And obviously the portals opened up. And so we're back at that and trying to, you know, raise money for NIL and, you know, just you, kind of life goes Keeps on. Going. Yeah, it does. Yeah. All I can say is that like, again, it, it goes back to what does a player want out of a college football experience? And then how much of, yeah, I always I wonder this. This is something that I, I'm sure it comes up not only at Texas A and M but programs across the country is when these kids walk in and they meet with coaches one on one. If the first conversation that they want to have is about NIL and how much money they can make, does that raise red flags or is that just status quo right now? And I think that's something that you have to balance is you know with with what A and M has gone through on that front. Like, NIL is certainly a part of the conversation, but can it be the leading part of the conversation? I don't know that. I'm I'm not saying that it's right or wrong if kids are doing that and parents are doing that. Um, There's certainly a side of me that understands this window for NIL as we see it right now may be closing. Don't you want to try to capitalize on it while it's still here? But, again, if you're trying to build a roster and you're trying to build a locker room and some team cohesion – you know, where is the line drawn for all that? That's that's something that I guess you'd have to ask Coach Elko. If, if, and I don't even know, or, you know, you could ask Kirby Smart. You could ask Kalen DeBoer now of the differences between Washington and Alabama. You could ask Brian Kelly. All these coaches, I'm sure, have similar but maybe differentiating takes in the minutia of how important those conversations are and where, when and where are they supposed to happen. So, um, it, it's it's still too early for me to go, okay, yes, Mike Elko is – they're doing this way, way different than Jimbo Fisher for a – you know, as a long-term analysis of his recruiting. What I can say is the stuff we've said since he's gotten here in November, December, super organized, great structure, really efficient. Grambling State, your thoughts overall on the competition coming to College Station? Yeah, I mean, I, I I think Louisiana, to me, is the most dangerous team outside of A&M in this regional. I think when you look at the Cajuns, um, they can they can match up with you a little bit pitching-wise. You know, Andrew Herman, uh, Chase Morgan's a really talented uh, freshman uh, out of Cypress. Uh, then L.P. Longvin uh, on the back end of the bullpen is one of the top relievers. Honestly, maybe the the best reliever in the country outside of uh, you know, back. And, you know, he's a really electric arm. He's a guy they're probably going to have to use, I would think, Texas in the opening game. Uh, Kyle DeBarge uh, this weekend, the big key for the Ags and or the Horns for that matter, uh, to keep him from getting red hot for the Cajuns. The best shortstop in the country. Just a really exceptional player. Uh, Texas, for me, I, I think they're one of those teams. I, I think their offense matches up well with Bluebell. Uh, I really like what they have at the top of the lineup with Jalen Flores, you know, Max Ballou, Jared Thomas. Uh, I love their lineup. Uh, what I don't love is their pitching. I, I think Texas for them to find a way to win this regional, I mean, they're going to have to get some Herculean performances out of Max Grubbs and, you know, Ace Whitehead. I mean, you're talking about a guy going at A&M that tops out at 86. I mean, on one hand, the Ags don't see that very often. On the other, I mean, your, your margin for error when, you're, when your velocity is around there is very, very little. So I just don't think Texas has the pitching to get through this. Uh, with that said, um, there's been plenty of, plenty of times for two decades where I thought Texas – couldn't get out of a regional or couldn't win a super, and they won it. So, uh, you know, Texas, historically, 
tends to play pretty well in the regional. So there is that caveat. And then the one thing I will say for A&M is I think A&M fans will look at Texas and look at Louisiana and go, oh, man, we got a little bit of a tough regional. But I feel like A&M got the weakest four seed in the field. I mean, if you go look at Grambling's results, especially non-conference, uh, I mean, to say the least, they're not very good. All right, guys. So Kaylee is uh, interested in a broadcasting field, in the broadcasting field. She's here shadowing us today. This is surprising to me, Kaylee. You, you're not a YouTuber? No, I've never used YouTube. Never? Conventional television? Like no. you're a newscast? And like you, how do you get your information? Uh, social media. Social media? But not YouTube. <laughs> what? Is there like a, a ban? Are they like spying on us? What, is no, there... I just never found it interesting. All my friends use it, but... You don't, do you don't know all the awesome content we do here? Yeah, I have the app. Okay, well, they're, they're, <laughs> okay, sorry. So, um, so you don't know what to do after you watch a YouTube video? Subscribe. See, you got this. What else? <laughs> like, comment, so you, share. You got it. Eric, she did it, right? <laughs> she did it better than I did. All right, there you go. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next time.